Tibet, are you going to drop claim that Tibet is part of China in the Taiwanese Constitution? In the Constitution? Yes, your Constitution. The Tibet, in this interview with many foreign correspondents, including Washington, over time, uh, will say clearly that the question of so called the challenge of the territory of question will be as said clearly that the Article 4 of where closure and change. Yes. Uh, maybe we could have you say your name. Uh, my name is John Wu. I'm a US citizen, but with strong Chinese background. <laughs> from World Second World War up to now. So the most important case here is the role of the United States. Because China will never give up the claim on Taiwan. You can say and I uh, know that the US law in the future cross relations uh, this status quo in the Taiwan will not be changed. So with that of course do anything to provoke, provoke the Beijing and we uh, will be admit to the so called. Thank you very much. I have two questions. Number one, last year before you accept President Chen's invitation, as from reading some of the articles, I wasn't clear based upon what criteria finally accept the position. That's question number one. Particular quarter, the second quarter of 2003, the people in Taiwan were so concerned and so worried about the future of Taiwan economy. But many of our businessmen come to see, came to see me and they asked me to come out and help them and help the government find a way to be, well, to recover our economy. So I was on the condition that this will be for uh, their action. The second question is that, uh, well, of course, with a very, what we call, very small margin of, of, of that election vote, well, I, I must say, it is, it is uh, certainly it is uh, nature and also is uh, uh, rational for Pambu to solicit the judicial uh, process. Uh, for and I'm just wondering what concrete steps you would suggest that could uh, bring the two sides um, to a point where they could confidently sit down and, and, and talk, and, and would you be a possible emissary for, for that effort? <laughs> no, I, I all my life to promote a better relation between the two sides. That's why uh, three years ago in Taipei, I have, uh, well, I have, uh, talk with my private sector people and they all encourage me to form a private and non, uh, non-profit uh, organization called cross Trade Common Market Foundation to promote these kind of relations. And uh, that we, our foundation is the only one founding member of our forum for Asia. So in that capacity, I visited Boao last year, and I'm going to Boao at the end of this month to attend that annual convention. And uh, I, I know that uh, well, we, because of this mistrust between the two leaders of the two sides, uh, it is very difficult for both sides to sit down and talk. But I must say, 
if we can find something which is common, commonly interest topic, just like topic of three things, which is uh, mutually beneficial and which will be a win-win strategy for both sides. Why not we just sit down and talk? How can we start and establish these three things as soon as possible? And I have been uh, trying very hard to see or convince our people be more flexible and more uh, pragmatic. I hope that will be serve as a first step uh, for both sides to build up a better understanding and, uh, and a better trust between the two sides. Thank you. The, the economic relation between the two sides uh, has never been affected greatly by the political confrontation across the street. So because of that, we see the increasing investment trade of Taiwan in China. And I must say, it is a, a very healthy tendency or trend that the Taiwan and China closely, the economic relation become so close that even this kind of political difference is where I don't think the Taiwanese people are very hostile against Chinese in from Czech or mainland. No, I think that was the wrong impression. We we people in Taiwan now you have you can I'm sure people a lot of people knows that how many uh, investors now or uh, were from Taiwan living in in China. There are about. 500,000 people now living in China. And aside from that, we have about every year 3.5 million people from Taiwan visit China. So if the China, if the Taiwanese people had China, I don't think there would, there would be so many people going to China. And <laughs> I have been my past. Well, 30, over 30 years of working in the government as a public servant, I've been dealing with all kinds of crises in Taiwan before. And uh, I never be frustrated. <laughs> and I always uh, was uh, a good mood <laughs> <laughs> to overcome, to manage the crisis and become more and more confident.